Hey, this is Bob from Dog Watch Cigar Radio. And this is Dale, and you're watching a video review on StogieReview.com. Excellent. That one sounded okay. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. It's a cold, crisp February morning outside here, outside our nation's capital. Welcome to episode three of Your Questions, My Answers. I am, I guess, your host for the next 20, 30 minutes or so or longer. I'm your host, Jerry, and I am joined, as usual, by who I always refer to as the hardest working member of the Stogie Review crew, and he comes from Pottstown, PA, and... Uh, He's also the best technical smoker I know, Mr. Walt White. Say hello to all the people, Walt, and let them know what you're smoking this morning. How you doing, everybody? As Jerry mentioned, my name is Walt, and I'm smoking the Arturo Fuente uh, Cedar Chateau, Connecticut, this morning, and I'm pairing that up with uh, a cup of Earl Grey tea. Nice, nice, nice. All right, so th I know it's only episode three, Walt, but... This might be our best show yet. You know, it would be even better if uh, we would have worked out all the technical problems that we had with Brian, but we couldn't get all three of us to work it out. So uh, Brian is the odd man out. But uh, uh, here in episode three, as you know, with your questions, my answers, we uh, take an attempt to answer some of the questions you guys have uh, sent us in. And as always, we reserve the right to be wrong. And uh, <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully we aren't. But if we are, uh, someone out there will will be sure to correct us. And uh, we have some great questions this week. And uh, so, Walt, why don't you get us started with our first one? All right, we got question one from Greg through uh, the Skype network. And uh, he wants to know the proper way to set up a humidor. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, seasoning-wise. He says uh, he's read quite a bit of literature, and everything he reads contradicts, you know, something else. You've got one way telling you to put a shot glass full of distilled water in a humidor, let it naturally evaporate and season the, the Spanish cedar. You've also got uh, the method of wiping it down with distilled water. And uh, you've also got you know, the last way, which is to, to boil the distilled water and place that inside the humidor, letting the steam you know, evaporate and quickly raise the, the humidity of the Spanish cedar. And uh, he also wants to know, you know, which way is the right way, obviously, and do we use beads or one of the Oasis units to season our humidors? So, what do you think, Jerry? Well, I, currently I use the shot glass method where you fill the shot glass up with distilled water and let it sit in the humidor, uh, closed humidor for, I think, uh, I do mine for two weeks. I know that might be seem kind of long. It, it really sucks when, uh, if you're just starting out and you order a humidor and your cigars at the same point and you plan on storing those cigars in that humidor, uh, that break, that seasoning period, you know, that it's going to take a while. I don't think you need to do it for two weeks. I think 48 hours might be a good amount of time. But uh, I know a lot of us are impatient and want to stick it in there. But you definitely got to season your humidor one way or the other. Um, so I always use the shot glass method. Um, uh, in the beginning, my first couple of humidors, I used the wipe down method, where you put distilled water on a paper towel or something, you wipe down the inside inside of the humidor and I gotta tell you I, I, I had bad results on that and uh, and ended up warping some of the wood in some of those early humidors and ruining some of my my, my friends humidors as well <laughs> who I gave that same advice to oh you know just wipe it down it won't do anything so uh, but uh, as for my personal humidor if you you've probably seen some of my videos on how to winterize your humidor I'm using 70% beads right now and uh, that seems to be doing a pretty good job of holding the humidity so what about you all what do you think well, I uh, I take the the method that uh, very few people uh, go with, and that is uh, wiping it down. Um, I, I'm sure you've you've known this that uh, you know I went to school for drafting, and uh, I recently changed jobs. Prior to that, I had uh, 12 years experience working as a cabinet maker and a furniture maker, and um, I, I think that experience plays off of why I I wipe the, the wood down. And that being that if you've ever dented a piece of wood in a wood shop, you know, ha to get that dent out, uh, you obviously just don't keep sanding and sanding and sanding and create a big divot. You, uh, you, f you swell the wood, and you do that with uh, a hot iron and a paper towel, a wet paper towel. You know, you take the, the wet paper towel, put it over top of the dent, put the hot iron on top, and you force the steam down into the wood. 
you know, in all the years that I've done this, I've never had a problem with the wood, you know, going crazy on me as soon as the iron touched the, the wet paper towel. So, that's, that's why I'm not concerned when I wipe down the humidor. Now, I don't, I don't take a soaking wet rag and wipe down the humidor. I'm, I'm dampening a cloth and wiping it down, just enough to get a little bit of surface water on the wood. And it's important to remember, if you have like a desktop humidor, where it's, it's solid Spanish cedar, there is no Spanish cedar lining, what I mean by that is, you know, the holes, the, the sides of the, the, the humidor, the top, everything is one piece of Spanish cedar, and you've got a finish on the outside like lacquer, polyurethane, shellac, you know, whatever that might be, your, your, your humidor is already in balance. The outside of the wood isn't absorbing moisture, and the inside is. So now you're prone to warpage, and, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say go wipe down a humidor like that, but if you have one that's, say, cherry on the outside, and you've got a nice Spanish cedar lining, like a 3 8 lining inside, I don't think you have much to worry about wiping it down. Just keep in mind that you want to use a very damp cloth. You know, you don't want to saturate the wood because that will force it to, to warp. And, and uh, you know, I don't have very many desktop humidors. I have three, but uh, they're, they're only 30 counts. I never really got into buying a nice, beautiful humidor. I've you know, I ramp right up from the desktop units to, to coolers. And in the coolers, I'm using 70% uh, beads. And uh, I've got a third cooler all ready to set up. I'm going to do a video on that. And I'm planning on using 65% beads. I, I haven't had the opportunity to to have the extra funds to pull away from my cigars to buy uh, a Cigar Oasis unit. But I hear they work very well. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard the same thing. I haven't really wanted to take the plunge into and they're spending that kind of money. I think they run like a hundred bucks for the initial unit, but I've heard good things about them. Maybe once we get that uh, walk-in humidor in our own houses, and uh, we'll uh, have to go that route. That is my long-term <laughs> goal. <laughs> all right, all right. So let's move on to our next question. And our next question comes from Jason. And uh, this is kind of a special question because we're going to actually have the Doc from StogieFresh.com. He's going to go ahead and read the question and uh, answer it, and then uh, Walt and I will, will add to the Doc's answer. So uh, take it away, Doc. Oh, this is the Doc from StogieFresh.com, and I've got a question on very old cigars. Here's a question. It says, I was lucky enough to come into a small inheritance of cigars from my grandfather who passed away a few months ago. My dad tells me that the cigars were the pride of my grandfather's life as he collected cigars from around the world. Do you know of any resource available that can help me identify what I have? I'd be interested in finding out the history of some of these cigars. Also, is there anything special I need to preserve these cigars, some of which are 50 plus years old? Are they still good to smoke? Well, you were indeed lucky to inherit something of such value to your grandfather and even though he's gone, perhaps you can share some of his passion for cigars. Unfortunately, I don't know of any single resource that will help you find out the information about the specifics of your grandfather's cigars. I mean, they are over 50 years of age, which puts them back before 1960. Well, having said that, I just happen to have a friend who may be America's foremost authority on cigar history pre-1960. His name is Tony Hyman and he's been collecting cigar boxes and amassing a huge historical archive of cigar information for over 50 years. He's had in his possession at one time or another over 15,000 cigar boxes dating back to just after the Civil War. Yeah, suffice it to say he can probably help you. I wish I could tell you that Tony has a website with all this wealth of information on it, but as of yet, we're still working on it. It's a work in progress. So, Here's what you should do. First off, take photographs of your grandfather's entire collection. Use a good digital camera, make sure you have plenty of good lighting. You want to have clear and detailed photos of the inside and outside of the cigar boxes. I'm assuming that the cigars are still in their original boxes. If you had any special humidors, make sure to get photos of them too. This will make it much easier for trying to get any information from people like Tony. They need to see the boxes and then they can more easily help you. After you've done that, I want you to send me an email so I can introduce you to Tony. I really don't feel comfortable just giving out his contact information over the internet, but I can hook you two up. 
Send the email to doc at stogiefresh.com. Now to the second part of your question. Is there anything special you need to do to preserve these cigars, and are they still good to smoke? It's been well noted that many cigars can age successfully and be excellent smokes over the course of many, many years. Sadly, however, if they've not been properly stored and humidified, they're almost undoubtedly unsmokable. I say almost undoubtedly because, let's face it, I've never smoked a cigar that was over 50 years old, whether or not it was properly humidified and stored. Having said that, you may want to pose that question to Tony. I've seen many of his boxes that still have the smokes in them. I don't think he has any plans on smoking them, however. I can say that tobacco is an organic material that is biodegradable. In other words, it can spoil and simply go bad. The oleoresins that are in the tobacco leaves and that are responsible for the burn qualities and flavors of a cigar can and do dry out and evaporate. When that happens, basically what you have left is a dried lump of vegetable matter. And who wants to stick that in their face and smoke it? If the cigars have been stored and aged and humidified properly, then you just keep doing the same. And if you need more information on how to store and age cigars, the stogiefresh.com main pages are devoted to the art and science of storing and aging cigars. Plenty of information there. If you already know what you're doing, you may want to fire up a couple and see what you got. And if you're in doubt, you may have to send a couple to me. For scientific purposes, of course. I think you have a great opportunity to share your grandfather's love of the leaf and also learn a lot about cigars and cigar history in the process. I hope you look forward to that journey, and I wish you the best of luck. All right, all right. Well, you know, we got to thank the doc there for taking the time out of his, uh, I know he's got a pretty busy schedule there. So we got to thank the doc for taking the time to, to answer that question. And i, I got to say, it's, it's a better answer than I could ever come up with, i tell you that. So, uh, But uh, what do you think, Walt? You got anything to add to it? or? Well, I... I think uh, the doc is is a, a very good authority on on aging cigars, and uh, whatever he says is is perfectly fine with me. Uh, you know, I look forward to uh, to getting advice from Doc. He's a real nice guy. And uh, if you're you're not familiar with uh, the Stogie Fresh Five, you should uh, definitely check that out. He does a a, a podcast in uh, five series uh, segments. I guess you'd. Uh, you call that, and uh, the latest one was uh, the uh, Camacho Corojo Diademas, and uh, an interview with Christian Eroa in Honduras, uh, poolside, at uh, Christian Eroa's uh, hacienda, and that was a uh, an awesome interview. You should definitely head over there and check that out. Wow, wow, wow! Poolside, huh? Wow. You know, I, I you know, I feel kind of bad because episode two, when we were talking about the podcast, we both listened to. I don't think either one of us said Stogie Fresh 5, and I felt kind of bad. But uh, luckily the doc didn't hold it against us, and he went ahead and uh, <laughs> gave us a great answer to the question that we needed. Because uh, i tell you what, when that question came in, I was like, man, how am I supposed to answer How are we supposed to answer that? And then luckily I thought if anybody knew the answer, it would be the doc. So thank you again to the doc for coming through for us again. So uh, you know, speaking of podcasts again, um, our next question comes from Chip, and Chip sent in a contact form. He used our Spiffy contact form, upper right-hand corner above our logo. And uh, he says, in episode two, you guys talked about the podcast you both listen to. Uh, my question is expanding on that. Uh, he wants to know what blogs or websites, cigar-related or not, do the Stogie Review guys read? So what, 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 what cigar-related websites are you reading, forums, or, or even non-cigar-related sites? What, what, what is a typical web-surfing day include for the Walt? Well, I don't have a whole lot of time to sit in front of the computer, although, I, you know, I do it all day long in front of a CAD machine, but yeah, I really can't get away from that too much. But when I do, you know, when I get my 10-minute coffee break and my lunch break, uh, I, I have a pretty strict regimen, and that is, first I check our site, first off, of course. <laughs> Next, I'm moving on to Club Stogie to, uh, to see what's going on there. From there, I'm moving on to Amagazi. Uh, I mentioned that in in my video, my last video actually, and uh, it's got a whole broad range of things, not just cigars. It's really been a great forum, and uh, the members are starting to climb. You know, it's getting to be a real nice place. Um, after that, I'm checking out uh, Cigarzilla.net, uh, real nice uh, site forum 
bit built around um, you know finding that perfect deal. And uh, and the guys over there, Land Shark and Tack Hammer, they've been real nice guys. And they also have a Thursday night chat that's that's actually pretty cool. If I could remember to, to join on Thursday nights, I'd participate much more. Unfortunately, I always remember on Friday night. <laughs> well, you know, it, I guess we, we, we visit a lot of the same sites, you know, and we both can never remember the days of the week because I always forget about the Thursday night chat, too, and remember on Friday. Um, <laughs> but my routine is kind of similar to Walt's. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I, uh, I check our site, and I check our site all throughout the day because I'm in front of a computer all day long. Um, so I, I check our site off, and then uh, I still check out Club Stogie occasionally. I'm starting to get into uh, visiting Cigarzilla a lot, um, which, by the way, if you watched uh, my last review on the Part of Glass Black, you'll know that they're having a little uh, monthly giveaway of a five-pack of cigars from uh, their sponsor over at TNT Cigars out of uh, uh, they're out of Phoenix, I think, Arizona. So yeah. they're, they're doing a, a monthly giveaway, that monthly five-pack giveaway there. Uh, so I check out Cigarzilla. I'm also uh, spending some time now over at StogieTime.com. Uh, and another one that I'm uh, somebody wrote in to tell me about was a. It's not linked on the on our site, but it's called uh, BlowinSmoke.net. There's no G in blowing. It's just BlowinSmoke.net, and that seems like a pretty cool place so far. Um, are, are they affiliated with uh, the podcast? No, no affiliation with the Blow and Smoke podcast. Different. Different, uh, different stuff there, but name similar, different content, I guess. Um, so I checked that out. Um, I also do uh, our friend uh, Tom over at Keeper of the Flames. Uh, I can't believe I forgot her. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so you can you can you can get to his site. By, there's a link on our sidebar under Stogie Blogs, or you can just go to cigarfan.wordpress. Is it .net or .com? One of the two. Things cigarfan.wordpress.com, but it might be .net. So. Uh, try, good on both. Yeah, try them both. You know, you might get lucky. You know, you never know what you're fine. But you know, Tom does a great job with all his reviews. I mean, uh, he reviews so many cigars that I've just never even heard of. That I'm like, man. And he, t- he, the way he reviews cigars is so, are so entertaining. I think uh, uh, he does one of the best job of reviewing cigars uh, out there. He does it really well. He does uh, a really good job of leading into leading into the, the, the review with a lot of information about the brand history and stuff, and you know it's a really nice read. Oh yeah, especially for us because you know when we do our reviews, we don't really go into details about the brand's history or the actual making of the cigar that much. You know, we just pretty much focus on the flavor profiles and construction, whereas he goes all out with the history of the brand and everything, and that's just such a delight to read. So he's one of the sites I go to a lot. Um, also, you know, even though I'm not a very political person, you know, we I, I check out our friends over at StogieGuys.com as well, and listen to their to their bits on uh, uh, the politics of cigar smoking, all the anti-smoking laws that are uh, going around. So I do check their side as well. Um, yeah, another one I forgot. I like their Friday wrap up too when they kind of wrap every, pull everything together from the week. Oh yeah, it, make, it makes it a lot e- really easy if you if you don't if you forget to check it out every day. You know, they post every single day, even on weekends, so it's easy to miss something. And uh, Yeah, a lot of times I check them out on the weekends, and I really like to, to read that, that Friday night article. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Or not Friday night article, yeah, but, but uh, the Friday wrap-up. Right. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called now. Friday something. Oh, well. When you go to the site, you'll you'll know what we're talking about on a Friday. So, uh, but yeah, that's about it. Um I'm sure we're forgetting some. I know we're we're, for, we're we're definitely forgetting something and someone out there, um, but uh, hopefully they'll forgive us and we'll catch them up next time. <laughs> All right, moving along. What's uh what's next on the list of questions out there, Walt? Okay, trying to catch up. Lost my place on the page here. All right, question comes from Ryan through uh, the AOL Instant Messenger service. And he says that he's a longtime reader, you know, loves the site. We really appreciate that. Um, he wants to know if there's any particular cigar we've reviewed so far that really stands out. And uh, and is there anything that uh, that we're looking forward to trying? And uh, do we have any big plans for our one-year anniversary? Wow. Wow. It was a long email. I had to paraphrase that a little bit. <laughs> My apologies. 
Alright, well, you know, uh, any cigar, particular cigar that stands out that we reviewed, what have we been doing this now, for almost a year? Yeah, next month will be a year. Wow. Believe it or not, it seems like time flies. I know, man. So, in the past year, a cigar that stands out. Well, you know, I, I, I guess when somebody asked me, you know, a couple of my favorite cigars, the two that come to mind are the Avo 80th Anniversary, a fantastic cigar. So that one really stands out. That was a pleasure to smoke. Uh, the other one would have to be the, the Camacho El Legend Ario. Um, it's, it's funny you said those two because they were the two that I had on the list. <laughs> <laughs> what can what we do? What can, what can we say? Great minds think alike. Right, right yeah, there's a very, very special reason why we, ha we hold those cigars in such high regards. That's right. And we'll, we'll get to that. that. That's right. We'll get to that a little later on in the show. But those two cigars really stand out for me. They both have, uh, they both are fantastic cigars to smoke. You know, wonderful flavor profiles to smoke, um, but then they also have sentimental reasons as well. So those two cigars for me stand out a lot. Um, as far as uh, cigars that I'm looking forward to try, I don't know. Does all of them count? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know every week, you know, everyone, you know, we get all kinds of messages say asking, "Have you tried this? Have you tried this?" Um, and I guess the one at the top of my list right now are uh, the Cao Italias. I've had a lot of of our good friends. In Canada, up north in Canada, uh, ringing in saying you got to try the, you got to try, you got to review the CAO Italia, and I've been putting it off now for, I guess, two months. So maybe uh, I should get to doing that. But uh, <laughs> so as far as big plans, I have no idea. We just take this day by day, you know. So we'll just have to wait and see what pops in our heads coming up our one year anniversary. So what do you think, Walt? Well, as for the one year anniversary, it's kind of tough because. You know, even though we we only post you know, three to four days a week on the site, it's just a whole lot of work, and uh, you really don't get a chance to look too far ahead into the future. And uh, this one-year anniversary really creeped up on us. I mean, I, I can't believe it's it's going to be next month, and I think we'll have to to come up with something to do there. But as of right now, just no plans. <laughs> Sad to say, but no plans. <laughs> as far as the cigar I'm looking to try. Um, there's one that's been on my list for quite a while now, and that's the Camacho Liberty series. And uh, I haven't had any luck trying to find one. The the only time I did find one, uh, the price was like eighteen dollars a stick, and uh, it was from a B&M that I'm not real crazy about, so I didn't want to give them quite that much business on one cigar. And uh, I, I I lucked, you know, I didn't have any luck finding it anywhere else. And then when I went back as a last resort, they didn't have any left. So I'm keeping an eye on. I think I remember seeing them on uh, Cigar International's website. I think I can buy singles. So maybe I'll do that over the course of the next few weeks. To gotcha. But, you know, is, do you know if that uh, Camacho Liberty is that a yearly release or did it just is it was it a one-time thing? No, it's a yearly release. There's uh, 2005, uh, 2006, and uh, during that interview I talked to you about with uh, the doc and uh, and Christian Aroa. He, uh, he mentioned something about there may not be a 2007 release. Uh, it may come out in 2008. So I guess we'll have to sit back and wait and see what happens there. Wow. Did he, did he say why there won't be a 2007, or did he just speculate? Well, he's, it seems like he's focusing on two other brands, um, and, and I can't remember what those two other brands were, but they, <laughs> they, they sounded good. Uh, I'll have to listen to Doc's interview once again and, uh, and jot those, those two cigars down and uh, bring them up next time. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, 